Hello all and welcome to Wild Crochet Designs yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on the gorgeous shamrock fridge magnet. I love, 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 it's so cute. Now for those of you who do remember we made um, heart fridge magnets for our Valentine's Day gifts so we are going to make the matching shamrock for St Patrick's Day. Oh, it's very nice. <laughs> if you um if you are interested in making a St Patrick's Day coaster, I will leave a link to the coaster in the description box down below. That's what we made last year. This year we are struggling for time, so we are going to make our gorgeous shamrock, which actually takes one row plus your stem. Super duper easy, nice and quick and easy. Now, what you will need for your shamrock is you will need some cotton here and this is a oh, let me get a close-up it is a four ply cotton it does call for a three millimeter hook now a four ply is like a number two overseas it's really quite thin um, you need that to make the size for your fridge otherwise it'll be far too big and you don't want it too big look how small it is there's my thumb I mean, look how small that <laughs> shamrock is. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So it does call for a three millimeter hook, but yours truly is going to be using a 3.5 because I crochet extremely tightly. So there you go. That's what you will need. You will also need your scissors oh, and that um, darning needle. Now, let me show you the darning needle just quickly. You need a darning needle with a point for this one because it's really hard to get through here it'll be like super thick now if you haven't got one with a point just take i didn't mention this in the tutorial but just kind of take one loop at a time when you're weaving through and it might make it a little bit easier for you and you will also need self adhesive magnets oh let me bring that down all right now this is the one that i bought uh for our hearts our uh, valentine's day heart and so i'll just show you quickly what they look like it doesn't have to be these all right this is what they look like all right and they've got the backing at the back that peels off so what you do is you just cut to the size that you need. All right, now if you look carefully, I think it was about a half or just under a half that I cut. Roughly under a half, it doesn't matter. It just depends on how big your shamrock works out. Now if you use a thicker cotton, your shamrock will be huge. Okay, so just heads up there and you can use any cotton that you like. I did use a four ply for ours. All right, so that is the, well these I should say, are the items that you'll need for your St. Patrick's Day shamrock. Okay, so I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm just going to let you get started with your shamrock. Good luck, guys. Alrighty, guys, we're going to start off with forming a magic circle or a magic ring, magic loop. I say it three different ways because everybody knows it differently. <laughs> we're going to wrap the working yarn around our fingers like so. Okay, so you formed yourself a little cross right there. Grabbing your hook popping it under the first loop, pop that back loop up and through. Now all you need to do is grab everything like so. All right, so don't let go. Now you're chaining one, like so. And that chain one is just to lock everything in place. You are now going to do a slip stitch in that center. This is a little tiny bit tricky, the first section, but after you do that, the rest is easy, okay? So you're just going to pop your hook in the center, pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Yes. Let me get a nice close up so you can see what we're doing now. And now we're going to chain two, one and two. Let's give that a little tiny tug, not too much. In that center, we're going to do a double crochet. That's yarn over your hook, pop it in the space. Pull a loop through, making sure you're holding everything. One, two, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. And now you can probably give that center a tiny bit of a tug there. Not too much, you have to fit quite a bit in there. Now you're going to do three half trebles. And a half treble is yarn over your hook like you're doing a normal double, popping it in this space like normal, pull a loop through like normal, three loops like normal, Except now you're putting yarn over, pull through one loop only. Yes. Now yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through the last two loops. You're going to do two more of these half trebles. So yarn over your hook, 
in the space, pull a loop through, yarn over one, yarn over two, yarn over last two. One more. In the space, pull a loop through, yarn over one, yarn over two, yarn over last two. Now you're going to do a double, a normal double crochet, yarn over, in the space, pull a loop through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. Yes? Just give everything a bit of a tug over there. And now you're going to do a half double. Half double is yarn over your hook, pop it in the space, pull up a loop. You've got your three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Just giving everything a little squash together. And now you are slip stitching again back into the space like so and that is one cluster set or I should say cluster set one because there are two cluster sets throughout the whole pattern this is one of them now we're going to do the second cluster set and that's chaining up two again one and two and you're going to do a normal double crochet in that space and you know how to do that two and two now you're going to do three trebles before we did three half trebles now we're going to do three trebles and a treble is yarn over your hook twice before popping it through your space into the space pull a loop through you now have one two three four yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through another two yarn over pull through the last two you're going to do two more of these one and two and in your space four loops Yarn over, two, yarn over, two, yarn over, two. One more. In the space, pull it through, yarn over, two, yarn over, two, yarn over, last two. Now you're going to do a double crochet, one, and a half double crochet, one. Okay, and now slip stitch back into the space pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook chain two one two you're going to repeat this set so that's your double your treble which is yarn over your hook twice in the space four loops two two and two yarn over twice in the space pull up a loop two two whoops that didn't go through the two <laughs> and two another one and that's your third one and then a double and a half double and notice the whole time I'm holding this center okay move everything over like that slip stitch into the space Pull a loop through, pull it through to the loop on your hook. Now you're chaining two again, one and two. And you're repeating the first cluster set that you did there. So yarn over your hook, double crochet. Now your next three are the half trebles, not the trebles that you did here, the half trebles, which is yarn over, in the space, pull a loop through, three loops, yarn over, pull through, one. Yarn over, pull through, two yarn over pull through the last two two more exactly the same one two and two one more one two and two and then you've got your double normal double crochet and lastly you have your half double crochet and now you're going to do your slip stitch yet again, like so. And from here we chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we're going to slip stitch across. You're going to go into the first stitch like so, pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook one. And then you go into your second one, two, and your third, three, and four, 
one more five which is tight but it's there like that okay all right from here we slip stitch firstly into the center like that and then we slip stitch we drop that little tail that we've been working on and we slip stitch way over into that little stitch you see right there which is fairly tight and that's your first stitch that you worked with so pull that loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook chain one pull up that loop give your work a cut now what you're going to do is leave that tail right there see your first tail that you worked with that little um, magic ring or magic loop you're going to give it a tug give it a tug give it a tug closes everything up like that just adjust it a little bit we're getting there we're almost there and give it a really good tug being careful not to um, break your yarn just give it a tug now it's almost closed so you, what you're going to do from here turn it over grab your needle oh, my thread is all frayed playing with it too much here we go thread your needle it is very frayed isn't it there we go that's okay it's all working now if you don't have a needle with a point this is a little difficult because all this is fairly tight okay your thread is on this side you need to start around here and work your way around now again if you don't have a point it's going to be difficult to get through and even that point is struggling now this is the back all right that was your front that's what we worked on and this is your back so you're going to pop your little needle through the back very tight oh i'm going to struggle to get that through okay but you know it's the only way to get this to sit nicely so when you put that there and you give it a tug it closes it up even more yeah so you're going to keep going around 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 like so it's closing up even more okay let's just keep going in the round really really tight isn't it just making sure you can't see the needle from the front okay i keep forgetting to pre-warn people when i do this kind of thing yes now you're back at the start again i still want you to go through a little bit more then it's not finished yet because you want to make sure this does not come undone it won't but still you never know you're going to go back the other way in a different area still making sure you don't you know see the needle from the front okay and keep going a little bit more i think that's plenty yeah that is plenty plus remember the magnet's going to go there too so it's going to close a lot up so give that a cut right there oh my gosh such a quick quick project okay grabbing your thread for the other side now this is where your um tail end of your shamrock is tail end mm, stem whatever you want to call it okay that's your stem end of your shamrock okay so all you need to do is exactly the same go to the back making sure you're not doing it in the front yes it's all very fiddly now isn't it <laughs> oh my God. there we go and go straight to the back like so and just find a little bit to weave that in you don't need to fuss too much with this it is the tail end after all but still a little bit one one way one the other making sure you cannot see this from the front yeah one more i think one more will do well, that was really thick did it work yes that's it folks Ta -da! and there you go Oh, how gorgeous is that? It's so cute. Now what we're going to do is pop our magnet on. Now, I don't know what sort of magnets you have, but I have this one here. And I use this for our magnet love heart for Valentine's Day. So there's the pack, all right? But yours truly, last time I actually cut some already. There we go. There's already one cut. So what you do is you just grab your magnet 
measure it up to your um your thing and then you just give it a cut there you take it off if you've got this kind here where it's self-adhesive all right if you've got that kind so that's what i'm going to do i'm not going to use this because that's, this one here is already cut for me from when i did the heart you peel off that layer oh let me get a nice close-up so you can see what i'm doing that is your right side of your shamrock and your wrong side is kind of fairly messy mm, actually, i'm sorry that is your right side get it right mary that's the right side of your shamrock the wrong side is kind of i don't know bubbled messy looking that is where you pop your magnet if you're anything like me try to keep it straight i found the last time i did it for the love heart i made it real crooked so giving it a big squeeze if you're a little bit fussy then you might want to um you know pop a book on it and walk away and then come back an hour later and your magnet is finally done let's move everything out of the way and this is what you should have projects with little magnets at the back and it's so small let me say i don't know just under two fingers tiny that is how small it is it's not even two fingers it's like a, a finger and a half i don't even know the measurement but how small is that and it's a matching size to our heart super duper gorgeous <laughs> so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things that you guys already do for me and all i want to say right now is happy st patrick's day <laughs> ciao for now